Hey, what's going on, everybody? KG here. Today, I want to give my raw reaction to the Sony announcement, and I wanted to give it as a fan, a fan of TVs, a fan of TV technology, because that's why I started the channel in the first place. I am a fan of this stuff. I love TV technology, and I would say I probably get more excited for these types of announcements than most people do on average. If you're talking about your average person, I don't think they're going to geek out about a TV announcement. But that's where I'm different than a lot of people. And I feel like a lot of you guys are different like that as well. And that's why I love this channel because I can gather people that are just like me and kind of geek out about this news. So in that same vein, like you, I probably put too much stock into these announcements. One thing I look at with these TV announcements is how many people does it really affect? How much does it move the needle for your average consumer? Because I think that's the main purpose of this TV technology world for me is are we actually going to be able to be consumers of it? That's why I don't talk about micro LED that much. It's just unattainable for most people. And when I say most people, I mean a good chunk of it. With some of the premium TVs where we could actually get our hands on these, it's a little bit different. And I wanted to say all that just so I can give you guys a better perspective of where I'm coming from with my reaction to these announcements. Now looking at it from that lens, let me first tell you what Sony announced and then I'll give you my reaction to it. Basically today we had a big information dump about RGB LED TVs, something that Sony has been working on. And we learned a lot from different creators and a lot of these creators are my friends. So go check out their videos once you get a chance to. All of them had their unique perspective of the announcement and some extra information that some videos might not have. Now we heard a lot about RGB LED TVs at CES 2025. I was there to cover it and I learned a lot about these RGB LED TVs there. There was some from Hisense, Samsung, and even TCL, which wasn't quite ready. From what I understood, there was a chance we could see some of these in 2025, but it was more likely that we're going to see them in 2026. I made a video on the RGB LED TVs and I really thought that was a really nice technology advancement for LCD TVs. We were hearing that the color brightness is going to be brighter than QD OLED TVs, something that TVs before wasn't able to do. And now we're hearing that the TV is also going to be able to get to really high brightness levels, which is going to end up being brighter than most OLED TVs that we've heard of thus far. At CES 2025, we also heard that blooming is going to be less prominent because it is going to be RGB LED based. You won't be seeing white blooming. And this is something that we've heard reiterated today with the Sony announcements as well. Still on the topic of the CES announcements, the only thing that really kind of drove me away from this technology was the fact that it is really only being announced in higher sizes. So 75 inch was the lowest that I heard of that was possible. And when it came down to Hisense, they were only showing it off in a 116 inches and the other downside to all of that was going to be the fact that I'm hearing that these are going to be very expensive TVs with the Samsung we were hearing that it's going to be more expensive than the 8k Neo QLED lineup and that's already a really expensive lineup so you could imagine these RGB LED TVs are going to come at a high price tag fast forward to today's announcement we learned that Sony is also working on a RGB LED TV because of course they are I'm not at all shocked by this news other TV manufacturers have been putting out this information about RGB LED TVs. So to learn that Sony has one in development, really isn't a shock to me. And apparently it's been in development for a very long time. A lot of the videos that came out today said that the prototype was about three years old. If that's the case, I really feel like they missed an opportunity to show it at CES 2025. You know, when all the other TV companies show off their announcements that's gonna come out in 2026, this feels like the perfect time to show it because you could say, hey, we also have RGB LED TVs, but ours is better and here's why. That would be the time to show something like this, not wait until March where everybody's waiting for your 2025 lineup, but instead we get greeted with this announcement that, hey, by the way, it's not coming until 2026. And this did two things. Number one, it didn't really move the needle much more than the other RGB LED TVs moved the needle at CES 2025 because what we were hearing was very similar to what we heard at CES 2025 about those other RGB LED TVs. I don't want to downplay anything that they showed off. I do think that this technology is really impressive. And I think the photos of what's going on behind the scenes is a really cool thing. 
I'd love to see how the panel is working. And we saw something very similar from Hisense. We didn't see much about the TCL. We didn't see much about the Samsung in terms of the behind the scenes look at the panel itself. We don't really know how much different the Sony one is from those. Hisense was kind of showing you what's going on with the backlight while the other ones, again, they weren't showing that. But Sony actually did show that much like they did with their prototype mini LED last year that ended up being the Bravia 9. And it does seem like it's a more impressive jump than where Hisense was with it in regards to RGB LED TVs. But again, I have to reiterate the only other one we've seen in this manner was Hisense. The other big takeaway from the information coming out of the Sony event was that the sizes available are going to be 75 inches and 85 inches initially in 2026. Another thing I gathered from the videos is the reasoning why they're investing in this technology so heavily is because they are thinking they can get the screen sizes to be bigger and more affordable. I will believe that when I see it because I think we're going to see this be a really expensive product when it is first released. I honestly expect this product to be very similar to how the Z9 was priced. You know, the 8K lineup that they had there. I'm not saying this is going to be 8K, but I do think it is going to fall in that kind of range where we're talking about high prices. And it feels like it's going to be out of reach for a lot of consumers. I really hope I'm wrong and I really hope there's going to be different sizes, not just 75 inch and above. But I fear that's where they're going to go with this. It's going to only be available in higher sizes and it's going to be a very premium price tag associated with it. So remember how I was saying it did two things? Well, that was the first thing that it did. The second thing that it did was in my mind, it kind of killed a lot of the hype for the 2025 releases. Let me explain. The 2025 lineup is yet to be revealed. And once the 2025 lineup is revealed, I feel like this is going to always be in the back of people's minds. So if you're looking for a TV in 2025 from Sony, maybe you're not going to buy it now all of a sudden. It seems like maybe you'll wait for 2026 RGB LED TVs if you are in that wheelhouse. If you're going for a bigger size, you're okay with paying a premium price tag, maybe you'll be the one waiting. In that case, I feel like Sony kind of shot themselves in the foot with this announcement because they're kind of showing you like, hey, we got better stuff coming than what's coming this year in a way. They didn't say that, but the announcement feels that way. It feels like they're kind of letting the air out of what's going to be announced later on this year. And because of this, I don't really expect them to do a Bravia 9 Mark II or something that's going to beat the Bravia 9. I expect the Bravia 9 to just carry over. But let's say you're buying in the 75 inch range. If the Bravia 9 doesn't get cheaper, then who's really going to buy a Bravia 9 this year when you know an RGB LED is coming next year, especially if you're talking about the larger sizes. So that's another problem I see with the announcement is that it's going to be hard to be excited for anything that Sony is releasing this year if you are going to be looking at those premium markets in the first place where the RGB LEDs could probably land next year. Now, a positive takeaway from all of that is that this year there's a potential spot where they could just reveal an OLED TV for their flagship for 2025. And that could end up being the four stack OLED TV that's also in the G5. And if that happens, then we have a lot more competition in the premium OLED TV market. So that could be really exciting. And they have room to do that this year. So I actually could see a world where their premium TV this year is going to be an OLED TV. It's going to be the one that they announced this year while they carry over last year's Bravia 9 as well as some other TVs from their lineup and then sprinkle in the X90L replacement and maybe another TV. But their focus could be on OLED TV as their premium TV this year. So that's kind of exciting because I think that moves the needle for more consumers. It's available in a variety of different sizes and it's going to be a little bit more affordable than what we expect the RGB LED to be once it's announced. But all in all, I couldn't help but feel a little bit let down, a little bit underwhelmed with this announcement today. Again, I love the technology and I love where it's going in the future. But that right there is the issue for me. The keyword being the future. This does nothing for 2025. In fact, I think it just hurts it. But I am still excited for the 2025 Sony lineup and I am looking forward to covering it. Hopefully it does have some surprises in there. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next one.